So hello and welcome everyone to Twin Flames, the great spiritual awakening podcast, where every week you can hear real life stories from people who answered the call of divine love. I'm Drake. I'm a certified Ascension coach with Twin Flames Universe and your host today. I've been on my Twin Flame journey for several years now. And thanks to the teachings of Union, uh, my life has just changed for the better drastically. And for our episode today, I have Dennis and Nicole here. And I'm happy to have you guys today. How is it going? We're doing good. We're doing good. We're happy to be here. And yeah, looking forward to sharing our story. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing your story. It's, it's been really fun watching you guys just come together. So I guess we'll just go right into questions. Yeah, let's do it. So you guys, when you figured out that you were Twin Flames and you're aware of it, you guys moved in really, really fast. And so what was that like for you both? What were you feeling uh, during this time? Oh, that's a really interesting first question. You want to go first? Not just. I should start. Um, yeah, that was a bit crazy how all of that happened. I guess to give a bit of a like in, important background information for this. For me back at that time, like I had been kind of healing uh, like my gender identity for like about a year and when all of that started that was also when Jeff and Shalia had invited me to explore with a person from the community whether we're true to in flames so when when I started that exploration with that person that person actually left the community about I think like two weeks after so I was kind of in the community for eight months healing kind of like I didn't even like that other person so I was kind of like why am I on this journey someone is my twin flame that I don't really like and it was a really great lesson on really like getting clear on my intention for being on the journey like it was really all about finding out that okay I'm really for God and not because I just want my twin flame and then I remember that week when we found out I were twin flames I had for the first time kind of started exploring maybe that's a false twin flame maybe I don't have to be with this person that I don't like and that was kind of the first time that I allowed myself to like I guess question that and when we met I know like we were working in a German volunteer team together and we connected over something that was related to the volunteer work and ended up having like a five hour phone call on like a Sunday where it got kind of clear like while we were talking I was already like I think this is my twin flame like it was it was weird it was like this like I remember that during that phone call I had many moments where we just we were just sitting in silence and not really talking I remember thinking that I've never felt so intimate with another person before in my life and then there were just a lot of like synchronicities and small things that Nicole said where I was like, ooh, twin flame signs. Maybe this is really my twin flame. And then from there, I started questioning, okay, this other person is probably not my twin flame. And kind of within a week, I know I had my group coaching with my coaches back then. And I brought that up and they helped me to kind of completely release that person. And then I think two weeks after that, we were already talking and claiming each other's twin flames. Like it all pretty much happened within a week of like releasing the false twin flame and then us talking about being true twin flames and claiming that, like really getting, okay, like this is the truth. Like we don't have any doubt. Wow. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's just so fast. It's really, it's really nice how fast that process can just work when you choose it. Absolutely. And you know, one thing that I, I guess I just want to highlight at this point is like, I feel like in our community, you know, we see a lot of people that seem to have like this overnight success. Mm -hmm. And that's also what it looked like for us. Like for me, I had been on my twin flame journey for two and a half years, close to three years. Nico had been also around, I think for like about two. How long have, have you been around? Um, I started really working with a coach and doing the inner work one and a half one and a half mm -hmm. oh that was quick <laughs> but yeah I had been around for almost close to three years really working with a coach I got TFAS and LPC in the very beginning so I was really kind of 
it was like not the like okay three years of I'm gonna I started with it like a year in but I was really like three years hardcore doing everything I could um and by the time that like I released that false twin flame that was already my third twi false twin flame so it was kind of like I had one the first my first one lasted for two years and I had another one for like a month or two and then the person that Jeff and Shia suggested suggested that I should explore with and by the time that we came together like even though it looked like this overnight kind of thing that happened really quickly it really kind of didn't feel like that because it was like there was like years of inner work behind having that overnight success if that makes sense yeah yeah it makes it makes total sense and perfect sense like when you're doing the work you, you may not see something happen for a year and then it just starts happening starts happening and it's very fast exactly yeah what was it like for you during that time when we came together um what was it for me i also want to share that um, I relate to this that it's um, not an overnight success because I knew in my heart who's my twin flame. I feel it in my heart and I, through the inner work, you connect with your counterpart in your heart and that's how you recognize your twin flame and of course through the love list. But this is, yeah, it does not, it did not felt for me like an overnight success. Mm -hmm. And we, before we had the call, we met actually two weeks before in a meeting and <laughs> had, um, yeah, I guess we, it was a work, about it, a work meeting and I got really nervous because he was so sweet and so handsome. <laughs> and I wrote down in my journal that, oh my gosh, <laughs> what would be if I'm in a same sex union and I got nervous when I'm with him and I don't know what this is. And I had this kind of like insight that it might could be, but mm. I pushed it away because I had um, upsets with being in the same sex union. And I always explored with, yeah, a divine masculine in a male's body. And it was the first time that I really faced down this, okay, it could really be uh, <laughs> that I'm in the same sex union. And it, yeah, I worked with my coach on that and they helped me very beautifully, mm -hmm. releasing a lot of fear in regards to this. And yeah. That was the same week that I was working through releasing yeah. my false twin flame. So that happened like simultaneously. And we were already like talking daily during that time. Because mm -hmm. kind of from that one moment where we had like that five hour phone talk to like one week later, really claiming each other's twin flames, we were, we both already knew, but didn't know how to talk about it. So we were like texting regularly. And I know for me, like, I had to deal with a lot of like I was a bit of runner during that week because I felt so much like love it literally freaked me out I was kind of like oh my god like I know the moment the, the day after we had that long phone call I woke up and I had Nicole's energy everywhere like I could feel her everywhere and I really freaked out because I was like oh my god what is this why do I feel her and do and then I was like oh my god damn I think she's my twin flame what do I do now and I also had to heal, I guess, kind of surrender the fact that she has a child, which is something that I never like had to like face on my journey because I never had a false twin flame before. Like any kind of, I never had to deal with like the thought of having a child or like taking care of a child. So that was kind of a big thing for me that one day, but then I was like, just like, okay, if she's really my twin flame and she has a kid, there's nothing I can do about it. I um, trust that it's going to sort itself out and I just surrender it and yeah, have faith that it's just as it's meant to be. And then, yeah, the day when, like, because we were talking so much and it kind of just like got to that point where it was like, okay, it's so obviously on the on the surface that we both think that we're twin flames and then it was just kind of just like okay how do we talk about it now and I was really awkward to bring that up every time when I think about it I was just like damn that was 
kind of in a funny way but I remember I just texted you and I was like I have something I'm wondering about but I don't know how to say it <laughs> <laughs> and Nicole called me the moment you saw that message and I think you mentioned like after half an hour of talking like hey I think we're twin flames and I was like I think we're twin flames too and then one hour later, she just told me that she claims me and wants to be with me and loves me. And I was just sitting on my sofa being completely frozen and kind of like, I don't know what to say. This is so much. And it really took me a couple of days to process. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much that week where we came together. And from there, we, we, like, we knew, like, because we had healed so much with false twin flames that by the time that we met, we, I guess, because like, we had healed so much about who we are at the core. I mean, we're still obviously healing through that because that's like a eternal journey until you're in perfect union, kind of. But like, because we had healed so much about that with false twin flames by the time that we met and saw each other for who we are, it was like so clear in our faces that, oh my God, that's really my twin flame in mm -hmm. front of me. Wow. Yeah, that's that's so beautiful. I just love that. It's so sweet. So so what was it like meeting each other like in person for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, ex, uh, mixed. Let's just say it was mixed. That day was a shitstorm in some sense. I. <laughs> That was like, when I think back about that day, I'm like, oh my God, that was so much. It was, how was it? Like, I, I was living in Berlin back at that time. Like, right now we're living in Austria. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I, I traveled to where we are right now mm -hmm. by train. So I had like a 10 hour train journey behind me. Wow. I arrived in Vienna and Nicole was there with her kid. And it's kind of like, you know, some twin flames, they like know each other for like a couple of years and you build like a friendship and all of that. And for us, it was kind of like being thrown into living with a, I don't want to say stranger, but in some sense, it was like that. Yeah, it was like that. Because although you know each other by heart, you don't know the person and you yeah. don't know what's your favorite color and who are <laughs> you you haven't built a relationship like friends and or anything anything but yeah you knew you love that person you knew this is it because mm -hmm. you explored so much as you um already shared you explored so much about who you are and who is this who is this feeling and this person in your heart that you recognize your twin flame but then when you meet each other it's kind of like I haven't expected that. Yes. <laughs> I know that I I was wearing kind of like Berlin has a very unique style. And so I was still kind of like, like my style was very influenced by Berlin. And I know I came and this is something Nicole told me months after, but she said like she saw me and she was just like, what was this person wearing? <laughs> like I was so <laughs> ugly. I was like, okay, thanks for letting me know months after. But like, it was kind of <laughs> like... Yeah, just like this, I guess to some degree in this sense, just like, yeah, what you said, like we didn't know each other as people. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, one thing that we moved so fast was kind of, you know, like that day when, when we met for the first time, like I only came with the intention to stay for like two or three weeks mm -hmm. to visit, which then turned into me never leaving again. But we yeah we had been talking for two weeks and it was like kind of for just like being on the phone for hours every day and it just came to this point where I just felt like there's no reason for us to not be together mm -hmm. and to not meet in person because we're like not on opposite side of sides of the world like it's easy for me to just take a train and come to you um but yeah that first time we met it was a feeling of definitely coming home like I felt that like we we hugged obviously when we obviously I mean we hugged when we met and that was very sweet and it was a feeling that I had never felt before that way it was really like coming very hard to describe but I think every person knows that feeling that I'm trying to describe here 
And then after that, we pretty much immediately had some upsets coming up because as I said, I had like a 10 hour journey behind me and I was really kind of tired. I was in a new country. I was overwhelmed. Mm. Nick, our kid was like Nicole had brought him with her. I was with Nicole and I knew she was my twin fan, but still felt like, okay, I don't really know you. And it was just like a lot for me. Yeah. And then half an hour after, like we were sitting in the car and half an hour on the way driving to Nicole's home back then, she told me, by the way, we have our session with Jeff today. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you kidding? And then she was like, oh my God, okay. I, and I, I looked at the time and I was like, I have five hours to prepare for that. And then we, we arrived home and that was also kind of a lot to work through because we... We were working through a lot of like our abundance vibration back then. And I came from a background where I had been like sitting in my parents' vibration for most of my life. And then when I moved in with Nicole, that was like the reflection of our true abundance vibration. So I was kind of like faced with any abundance upsets that I hadn't been looking at. Um, so I was like, that day for me was just extremely overwhelming and just a lot to take in. And yeah, then we had our session with Jeff, which was, I mean, he, I felt a, really stuck in that session. I was just kind of like, I'm dealing with so much. I'm so overwhelmed with everything. Like, I mean, he helped us wonderfully. Like we're still going back to that session, even two years after mm -hmm. and healing things that he mentioned. Yeah. But I know that on that day, I was not able to fully receive the support he was able to offer us in that session mm -hmm. in a way that I would have really liked to, because yeah, it was just a lot to, to take in. Yeah, I, I can imagine just meeting each other and having the session. But I mean, it, it sounds like you went through it really well, though. Like it was, it was, it was overwhelming, but you got through it and you did it. We did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Good. So how was it for you, Nicole? How was it for me? Yeah. Um, the first thought which came to my mind was, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing because you look like a clown. He had a fur coat <laughs> in green. It wasn't um, a fur coat. <laughs> it's a fur coat. No. But I was like, I was embarrassed at the moment. And yeah. so romantic. <laughs> Sorry. And I had expectations. I was like, okay, what would it be like meeting your twin flame for the very first time? And this very first time is the last very first time. And mm -hmm. I had this imagination in my head how, how this looks like. And then it was like, not that what I thought it would be mm -hmm. um but you mentioned the hug mm -hmm. and this was what I've experienced after we came home because I was overwhelmed as well I had to um focus on the traffic and our kid was in the car and yeah and when we arrived at home we had this very beautiful hug and this was the feeling oh, yes. this was the feeling <laughs> which I always had when I cuddled my pillow oh. in the nights when I fell asleep and I was like okay one day I will hug you in real and it was like yes I know that feeling I know that mm. and this is you will not recognize your twin flame um, from the outside you recognize your twin flame by heart and mm. this is still where I recognize my man I close my eyes and I feel in my heart this is it mm. this is yeah what I always wanted I remember that hug too I know that like it was really intense because it felt like that was the time when we like actually like the moment when we actually physically came together mm. even though we'd been sitting in the car for like an hour but that was actually the moment where it kind of felt like our energies came together like yeah. in the physical and 
I just felt this huge like energy coming up and like my my knees st started shaking so I like, had to sit down in that room because it was so intense and so much energy and it was that feeling that Nicole described of like okay this is this is it this is what it feels like to be with your twin flame in the physical in in your union and it's not that different when you yeah it's just that I feel it is different but like it's like once you get used to like when you're in union it's almost like you get used to being in that state always like today I find it hard to remember what it felt like to not be in union because it kind of becomes your new natural state of being mm -hmm. but that was like I feel like in that moment when we had that hug that was like this huge where you could really feel this contrast of how it felt how you were like felt before mm -hmm. And you now entering the new and how different the new feels. And then from there, you know, you, yeah, as I said, you, you get used to it and you, you, you're in your union every day, which doesn't make it less beautiful or all of that, but it just, yeah, becomes your new normal everyday life. Yeah, I love that. It's, it's so beautiful. And, and the feeling is, is, is beautiful also. It's just peace and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys mentioned that you, you have a child. So what, what is that like, you know, having a child in your union and, you know, Dennis for you being a father and just transitioning from no kid to a kid and just all of that. Um, I think one of the words I would use to describe it is funny. It's very, very funny to have a kid. Um, I would also say that it definitely required quite a big transition for me in my lifestyle and everything because I was I was 23 by the time mm -hmm. we moved in together and I actually thought that I was really clear on never wanting kids I also while growing up or being you know older before 23 I never had kids around me like I never had relatives or friends that had kids or babies or any of that and when we moved in our kid was five mm -hmm. he had just gotten five. Oh my god he was so young he's eight now <laughs> no he was six he must have been six he's turning eight. he's turning eight okay he, he actually was five wow um so it was really, really new for me. In the beginning, I literally felt like I don't have the slightest cue what the hell I am doing, how to talk with him, what is right or wrong. And Nicole helped me a lot. Like in the beginning, I know I would go a lot to her and be like, hey, what do I do? And how do I treat the situation? What's the right thing to do? And she was incredibly supportive and just like showing me how to have a kid I guess for lack of better words um, and yeah over time like we've been working definitely on partnering in our in like having a kid together and all of that and you know seeing like okay who takes care of what so for me it was also about stepping into responsibility and partly I felt like a kid myself so I still have moments today where I'm like, okay, I have a kid, but I still feel like a kid. So uh, just, you know, doing my best. And yeah, it was, I feel like you have kind of the next piece to add for me. Mm -hmm. um, as Dennis moved in, mm -hmm. our kid had a very hard time because what can happen is that children project the twin flame onto their parent and our kid had kind of a dark night of the soul what was um our coach back then um sharing um in okay i'm losing my mom and also losing my kind of false twin releasing a false twin flame experience and we helped him moving through that and it was it was a rough time he really smashed toys and then it was a lot of energy moving and yeah it felt like I for me it also felt like I had two kids because Dennis really had 
a lot of loneliness in 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 his appearance of eating habits it was like okay um i was, guess for clarification like i i was really used to living alone yeah so now having someone that i live with that is not my parents like that i had been living with for six years like i had been living on my own for six years prior to moving in with nicole so i had like kind of the like the living alone lifestyle and i was a student so yeah i was like the student lifestyle of living alone and then moving in and now having a partner and having a kid and like living in a, a family was was very new mm -hmm. and but we got there mm -hmm. we got there and we had our structure and our family life and also yeah our our happy times we're still getting clear about where is this journey going and is our kid going to stay with us is our kid choosing to be with us this is something we are working on and mm -hmm. also i had a codependent relationship with my kid in a way that um i projected that my love twin flame stuff onto my kid but not in an intimate way but in this way that um friends and kind of like fun stuff into okay let's have fun and let's do things together and this is also shifting and changing mm -hmm. that you really um have a partner who's everything and mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. this is what's changing when you have a kid there is this balance in between there's this balance about everybody has his place and spot mm -hmm. and i feel what's really really important to mention is that like when you have a kid with your twin flame all the parts where you're not putting yourself or your union first are going to come up because if you in if you have any patterns or places where you do like the old parenting and you're putting your kid first mm -hmm. and you know we all know like the order is god then you then your twin flame and then everyone else And that's like a like sometimes seems like a like a hard pillow to swallow when it comes to kids because we're used to okay we have to put our kids first and all of that and in your union you really have to learn that okay it's really god then you then your twin frame and your union and then your kid and to mm. really really learn to honor yourself and put yourself first because yeah otherwise it gets uncomfortable and you start leaking away the energy of your union And that can happen with any relationship. Like it doesn't have to be your kid. You can do that with any relationship where you have like a codependency or you're putting them above you or seeing them as your source for anything. And I feel that was also like yeah. something that we've been healing since coming together, just like pretty much different relationships where we had been leaking away our energy and really just like closing energy leaks right and left. Yeah, that, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And so how, like, how has it been, um, you know, like finding out that you're in a same-sex union and kind of, uh, you know, shift, like shifting into that and just realizing um, like the inner qualities, you know, like coming, coming from the inner and then seeing on the outside. Does that make sense? You mean kind of like what our inner process was like? right okay i get what you mean you want to go first with this one no you can go first that's a, def a rather deep question i'm just feeling into where to begin i can say that for me like i had known that i'm in a same-sex union for about 10 months before meeting which was the time that i mentioned earlier when Jeff and Shelia invited me to explore with that other person from the community who was very clearly a divine feminine. So I remember I had a meeting with my coach from back then, and she told me when she shared that, hey, you know, you're invited to explore with this person. So she shared with me that that would make me the divine masculine. And that for me back then was, I can't really say it in other words, and pretty much a huge shock because I had never my entire life in any way questioned my gender identity. 
Like even on the twin flame journey, my false twin flame was a divine masculine. And I did not expect my twin flame to be a divine feminine. And I absolutely did not expect that I was gonna, I'm, I'm the divine masculine. Um, so when I first found that out, it was kind of like opening Pandora's box of hidden trauma that I had been carrying around and wasn't aware of because I had this entire part of me was had been like completely numbed out, like, like completely, completely numbed out. So the first six months of like working through that process, I was were extremely challenging also because I had a person that I thought was my twin flame left the community. And I really thought, okay, I messed up completely. I went against God and I wronged Jeff and Shelly. And I had to work through like a lot of guilt and shame and feeling like I'm like a bad person. And I was, it was also challenging because I, I was sitting in a lot of trauma and I wasn't aware that that was what was going on. So I was trying to work through it and it just, it kind of felt like no matter what I did, I wouldn't, like nothing helped. And I was, I was really, like that was a really kind of like the biggest dark night of the dark nights of my journey so far, like that kind of six months. And then at some point I finally realized, oh, okay, I have trauma. And I immediately booked a map session, which was also the same time that Nicole had a map session. I think you were a month before me yeah. or a month after. Before. Before. So this was June and July 2019. Mm -hmm. So once I had got gone through that map session and I healed five traumas, and that's when I finally started to be able to feel through my feelings and really hear stuff around my gender identity. And that's also when a couple of months after we met and came into union, which mm -hmm. I can absolutely say would never have happened without MAP. Like, I know that if I hadn't been able to hear these traumas, like, I don't know how long it would have taken us to, to meet and come together for me to be able to feel good. And to recognize each other. Yes. No, never would have happened. Yeah. Um, so by the time we met, I had kind of come to a place where I felt generally at peace with being a man. And obviously I knew I was in the same sex union. That was clear for me from the beginning, but also something that I had never, never expected really in my life. Looking back, obviously once that came up, I, I was thinking back and I was like, oh, actually, okay. I had these girls that I was actually attracted to and I had this one girl it was kind of like my first girlfriend but we were just like buddy friends but um looking back then I, I i kind of could recognize like actually what was going on we were having like almost a girlfriend boyfriend relationship so that was definitely funny to see and what i could also recognize in my journey is that my entire life i had always fallen in love with gay guys and I was really confused about why that had happened. I was always like, why is this happening? Like, what's wrong with me? And my first course twin flame was also gay. And that's something that I had been trying to hear for like a year or two. And I was really confused, okay, what was going on there? And then knowing that I'm a man that like made things clear of like why all of that happened. Um, so what I can say is that it's really been a process. Mm -hmm. like, you know, healing, for me, healing my gender identity has been the primary thing that I've been healing for two and a half years now. And I feel like it really took me two years to come to a place where I can say, okay, the, the heaviest part is over. I can have like my peaceful life and continue healing through my things because the first two years were really, really incredibly challenging because it pretty much required me to change everything I thought I knew about myself and just like surrender all of that and let all of that go. And then also when we came together, because you, you twin friend is your perfect mirror, we also pretty much instantly, I think like after two or three weeks of coming together, I had like a new wave of like traumas come up, which this time were like sexually related. Yeah. Um, so the first two or three months of us being together were again really challenging because I was sitting in trauma again and this time luckily I recognized quicker that it is trauma 
Um, so again, I went through MAP and Nicole had a MAP session about a couple of months after me then. After you finished? After I finished, like, yeah, three months after I went through the MAP pro process. And after like Nicole's MAP session, that's kind of when things started to, to calm down and we were like, okay, we can focus on other things. But it's been, it's been our one big focus of healing and one thing that I feel like I've definitely learned from it or like I'm still learning is really to have patience because the way I like to approach my inner work is kind of jump head first in heal the thing in one day and move on and you know really really feel all of my feelings at once and be you know move through it quickly and with healing my gender identity, I, I've just absolutely not been able to do that because it's been so much and in so many layers and still such a big like emotional, spiritual and like mental transition that like I really have to take it like almost one baby step after the next and just mm -hmm. have a ton of patience with myself and with us. Yeah, that's my side. <laughs> Yeah, my side started as um, as you started yours. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, there were many same-sex unions coming into union. And this was the first wave of, oh my gosh, hopefully I'm not in a same-sex union because it triggered me a lot in my identity and also what would be if my family... Uh, how would my family react and how would my kid react and all of this um, fears came up um, and for me I fell in love very early or had crushes um, with the divine masculine in a female's body and I also had a relationship um, when I was a teenager with a girl or divine masculine in a female's body but um, my family reacted um, very poorly and therefore I denied and um, put this under the carpet that there could be some uh, yeah mm -hmm. some emotions about that and I lived a life where I put myself in a box and I was the housewife and the mom and had a job and I really yeah denied my my feelings about that but it was not it was relieving really facing this and yeah it's a process and you have to be patient with yourself in moving through all of this Mm -hmm, absolutely and it also is kind of a thing where like I know for me like I, I had to kind of start at ground zero and really say okay I don't know like I don't really know what what a woman is what a man is and just really take it because you know one mm -hmm. thing that I've noticed and this is something that I've heard other people mention to you that have been going through this identity healing gender identity healing that like if you believe your entire life that you're a gender, like a specific gender, like in my case that I'm a woman, then I'm going to believe that what I feel is me and what I do and how I am and that that's what a woman is. And then you don't even see what how a real woman is or how a real man is because you're just seeing what you're projecting, basically your, your version of what you think it is. So it's kind of been like letting go of the label and recognizing like partly, okay, the parts inside of me that I really, where I've really been holding on to what is not me and the parts inside of me that I then started pushing away because I thought that's a feminine thing because that's the label I put onto mm -hmm. it, but actually mm -hmm. was my true self. And it's been a lot of like figuring out, okay, what is really me? What is not me? Where am I pushing my true self away? And where am I like, you know, holding on to attachment to something that's not me? Yeah. And yeah, that's really a kind of sometimes a difficult journey and that like requires a lot of surrender. surrender. A lot of surrender. That's that's kind of the thing. Yeah. But you get mastered in surrender 
what you don't know. Absolutely. It's, it's just okay, I don't know. And you have to be humble to, I have no clue who I am. I have no clue what I want. I don't know what the outcome will be, but I have a choice. And this is the only thing what you can really be secure of. You have a choice and your choice is powerful and you have to surrender the outcome and the outcome will always be what you have chosen. Mm -hmm. And this is the journey. Absolutely. And yeah, in the beginning, I know we also had one, just one week where we really surrendered like, who we think that we are like we, we literally had to surrender okay maybe what what if i am the woman after all and nicole literally surrendered to what if she's she is actually the man and that was like it's it's yeah it's kind of again like it really requires a lot of surrender and you to be really willing to to find the truth mm -hmm. and really work through any upsets Because I know for me, when I heard for the first time that, hey, you're probably the divine masculine, I knew that moment that it was true. Like, I couldn't say that I'm not. Like, there was nothing in me where I, like, I could have had it in me to say, like, I don't see that. I don't believe that. I, I don't know what, like, what to do with this. The moment my coach back then said that would make you the divine masculine if that other person is a twin flame, I was like, Phew okay, how am I going to work through this? I have no idea, but I know it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And now I have to face this and deal with this. Or I could run away and pretend that I've never received this information mm -hmm. and continue hiding my entire life. But because I had this one part in me or like this big part in me where I was like, I don't like this truth. It triggers the hell out of me, but I know it's the truth. I can't deny it. And that's kind of what you you just have as your base that even though you like I have times where I still feel like my old self and I'm I'm like I have days where I kind of feel like genderless so I don't know what and that's like the days where I just have to trust that okay if I know the truth I can't deny that I'm the man like I just simply can't because I feel so much that like going backwards especially at this point after two and a half years would requires so much effort like I had, would have to undo all of this work mm -hmm. that I did and I'm just like I, I don't want to go through this again like one time is enough healing through this <laughs> yeah this is where the self-love you have to love yourself so much that you don't want to experience the pain again mm -hmm. and you will come out of the tunnel and it will be wonderful it's the moment for, for this hug I experienced with you the moment you arrived oh. <laughs> I would do everything again and 10 times more it's like this is it's worth it this is what I want to say it's mm -hmm. worth it and you have to do it for yourself for your divine self not even for this lifetime because you're doing it for your eternal self You do it for, yep. for God. And this is, you can't drop yourself here. And as Jeff and Shlia say, like, it's not a question of if you have to go through a lesson mm -hmm. or a healing, it's only a question of when. So yeah. even if you, whatever pattern or upset you have, even if you say, you know, you're not going to, you don't want to look at that. The only thing you're doing is putting it off. And I know for me, I really had this moment where I was like, I don't want to, Like, this is inevitable. If I deal with this now or if I deal with it in 10 years, it's going to be the same stuff to deal with. It's not going to get easier in 10 years. It's probably going to get harder in 10 years because I'm going to have 10 more years of living a false identity to unravel and undo and heal through. So I was like, okay, it's, it is uncomfortable. It's not easy. It's been really, really challenging on some days, but I have to go through that anyway. So I'd rather do it now and get to the other side quicker than not do it and just put the inevitable an inevitable off for another couple of years. Mm. And what, what I want to say at this point is that it does not need to be hard. It's not like Phew, the awakening path is hard and everything is so challenging and mm -hmm, but 
it would be a lie when we not address that you have to face down your fears. Mm -hmm. You have to face down your upsets. You have to be willing to change for yourself. Mm -hmm. Not because of getting something, not because of, don't know, not because of for someone else. You have to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And because of God, you want to be with God. You want to feel peace at the core. Mm -hmm. And this is, what should motivate you enough to go through your challenges and yeah. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. It's just in, very inspiring. So I think I think we're gonna ask the last question now. So it's uh it's if you if you could go back in time to the very beginning of your journey and give that version of yourself a message, what would it be? Hmm. I think for me, it, I, I would tell that part of that, that version of myself that stuff is going to happen on this journey that is not going to make any sense and you're not going to understand it and it might not feel good, but God's taking you somewhere beautiful and it's safe to trust God. Beautiful. Um, I would tell myself that God loves you and that you can be on the winning team. And that means that you have to choose to, to win. You have to choose to be successful. And success is a choice. Being in the winning team is a choice. And God loves you and you can succeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I love that. That's, that's, wow, that's nice. Okay, so I'm going to actually do one more because we got, we got a little more time. But um, let's just, let's go back to the very beginning. Like what made you guys like both awaken to this one thing journey? Like how did, how did you find Jeff and Shalia? Like what was this, what was this starting thing? It's nice jumping back to the very beginning now. You want to start with this one? Mm -hmm. No? Me again? <laughs> okay. Um, I had found Jeff and Shalia back then because I was already kind of on a spiritual journey. I kind of was like from a very young age, like with nine or so, I already started reading like spiritual books and whatnot. My, my parents were, I guess, kind of like raised me in a spiritual way. Um, mm -hmm. So like the concept of God and all of that wasn't something new to me. I was like, I, I always had a love for God and I, I couldn't like, like religion wasn't something for me necessarily, but I always had like a relationship to God. Mm -hmm. And then when I was about, how old was I? I was 19 at that time, like after I finished my school, I, I lived abroad for a year and then I moved to Berlin and uh, studied acting for a year there. And that's where I met my first false twin flame. And I guess back then I was, I mean, my entire life, I had always been looking for that one true love. And at that point, actually, I had come to a place where I was like, because the way I had approached it always was like, if I find this one person that's meant for me, then I'm going to be happy. They're mm -hmm. going to be my salvation. And that was actually the first time where I was like, okay, maybe that person doesn't exist. I don't mind. I'm still going to be happy. And I, I kind of came to a place where I was unattached to finding this one person where I said, believing in true love but I found peace with okay if I find them or not if they exist or not I'm going to be happy and I'm going to live my life and that's when I met my false twin flame who awakened me to the spiritual journey and yeah I kind of started in the way that like I expressed my feelings to this person and just got completely rejected and that really threw me into this pretty like months long kind of dark night of the soul where I was like I finally came to a point where I was like 
I feel constantly so bad. I can't get out of all of these feelings that I'm feeling. I don't know what to do. And I remember at the beginning of that year, I had come upon the term twin flames for the first time. And I was like, okay, I think this person is my twin flame. That makes sense. And, you know, it all like clicked and it resonated with me. And at that time I had started, I was already like doing meditations and reading a lot of spiritual books and all of that. And I had really started to like develop a sense for recognizing my blocks and why I need to heal and all of that, but I didn't know how to do it. It took me like such a long time to just hear through one upset, basically. And then at the beginning, like two months or so after finding the term twin flames, that's when I reached like kind of this rock bottom moment of like, I'm done with feeling bad. I've been feeling so bad for the last six months of my life, just being in this constant feeling of rejection, not knowing how to make it work with this person. And I went on YouTube and I was like, okay, I need help. And I just typed into the search bar, help me God. I was just guided after one day where I was like, okay, this is the last day I want to feel bad. I need help. Type, please help me God. And then one of the, look through some videos and one of the videos that popped up were one of Jeff and Shalia's videos and they talked about twin frames, which I think I was, I mean, I was already familiar with, determined all of that. And I listened to the video and I was like, these guys don't only talk about twin flames, they actually have the practical, like manual of how to actually make it work. That, you know, it's not just a theory, but actually, because I was always like, okay, I want to be in my union, I want to be with my twin flame, but what do I do now? How do I make that happen? And when I found them, I was like, wow, they, they have the practical part and what they say really resonates with me and feels peaceful and I feel like they're really authentic and just like relatable and just really know what they're talking about and I got a med meditation CD Romance Attraction Dreams Coming True joined the open forum two weeks <laughs> later and then two months after that I was already working with two coaches and had LPC and TIFAS wow so I, I found him and I was instantly like, wow, this is what I had been looking for my entire life. I'm going to go all in. Like no reason to wait. That's perfect. I came a little bit from the woo-woo side. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a lot about the secret and the law of attraction and um, had this okay the earth is transcending there is a change going on there is this awakening and you have heard about the awakening and you have read about the awakening and i knew in my heart i want to be part of it i knew there is a reason why i'm on earth there is a reason why i have experienced what i have experienced and i don't know how to get out of it and i don't know how to really transcend i don't know how it goes but i knew um, I had to call in my heart to be part of something very big, to be part of something what has meaning, what has purpose, and who's changing for the better. And after several years, I also came to the term twin flames, but I did not really know what it means. It was, I thought it was about soul contract soul switching mm. don't know what but there was a perception of what it could be but i knew a twin flame is an ascension tool it was described like that and yeah the time where you had your um false twin flame experience mm -hmm. was the time where i had um, the first, let's call it awakening wave of oof, there is a uh, love I feel for a person and I don't know what it is. And I, yeah, came across Fabian's YouTube videos. The <laughs> and it was Fabian and my Ascension coach back then who really built the bridge to Jeff and Shalia. Mm -hmm. It was not Jeff and Shalia at first place. I really had to build the relation with the community and the coaches and 
become an Ascension coach. And one day I was sitting in front of Jeff and Shalia and yeah, claimed them in my heart as my guides on the awakening path. Wow, that's perfect. I love that. I love that a lot. Well, thank you guys like so much for just sharing your stories and uh, just being vulnerable and sharing all of yourselves. It was really healing to just listen to you guys. Uh, and thank you so much for joining. It's kind of cool. I'm inter interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> yes. thank you thank you very much for doing this this was for us too i feel a lot of fun to to just share about that and really helps to like kind of relive that in a way and like see it from like a different perspective now that you know you you are where you are today and you then you know looking back on your journey was yeah it? absolutely yeah, it was, I'm so glad that I was able to just interview you guys. It was really nice just like going through the journey with you guys because I felt like, you know, I was just walking with you guys and, and talking. So so thank you for that. Yeah, it was very, very beautiful. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you to, uh, to everyone who has been watching or listening today. If you desire to find out more about how you can heal twin flame separation and manifest your union and harmonious union with your twin flame, be sure to check out www.twinflamesuniverse.com. We have an amazing, amazing free Twin Flame introductory course that is available and will really just skyrocket your Twin Flame journey. You can sign up for that on the website. And uh, we'll be back next week with a brand new episode and look forward to seeing new people and seeing all of you back. So may God bless your Twin Flame journey to a harmonious union. And see you next time. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.